Should I buy a Boofwang or a Redivis? Which GMRS radio would you buy? Which radio do you recommend? Please tell me what radio to buy. Those are all questions from my many adoring fans, either posted on my videos or emailed directly to me. And I must admit, nobody ever told me that being a YouTube superstar carried so much responsibility. But do not misunderstand me and let not your heart be troubled because even with as much disdain as I have for these kinds of stupid questions, kindness is still my Achilles horse. So allow me to share with you the most important things to think about when shopping for a GMRS handheld walkie-talkie radio or a mobile GMRS radio to insert into your vehicle. First of all, let's get one thing out of the way and address the most common disconception that there is about GMRS radios. And that disconception is that some brands or models of GMRS radios have significantly more FARs than other GMRS radios. So allow me to say this now for the 10 millionth time, all GMRS radios, whether it be a handheld walkie-talkie radio or a mobile radio that you insert into your vehicle, for all intensive purposes, they have the same FARs. Allow me to be more pacific and hopefully prevent a bunch of stupid comments. All 5 to 8 watt handheld GMRS walkie-talkie radios have the same FARs as all other handheld walkie-talkie GMRS radios. And all mobile GMRS radios with similar power output have pretty much the same FARs. There is no brand or model that has more FARs than any other brand or model, all else being equal. In other words, this handheld GMRS walkie-talkie radio that costs over $200 of monies has the exact same FARs as this $40 handheld GMRS walkie-talkie radio. So why does one cost $40 and the other cost over $200 of monies? And as a newcomer to the exciting and dynamic world of two-way radios, what should you consider when shopping for a radio? My friend, listen very closely because the answer is simple. In fact, the answer is so simple that apparently many people cannot see the answer right in front of their face. And as us English and literature experts would say, it is if they cannot see the forest near the trees when deciding which two-way radio to purchase. What I am saying is when you are shopping for a radio that you are going to use, look for the things that matter to you. Again, allow me to be more pacific. Before shopping for a new two-way radio, ask yourself this one single simple question. What are you going to do with this radio? And where will you be when you're using this radio? And will you be using it while sitting on the couch or while making adventures? So for example, if you plan on using the radio while making adventures, is the radio easy to use in the heat of the moment? Or is it complicated and confusing and fiddly? Is the screen tiny and difficult to read in the bright sunlight? Or does that not even matter to you because you'll be using the radio while you're on your couch? Is the radio big and bulky and hard to carry around? Or is it small and lightweight? Do you need a battery that can make it through an entire day of hard adventuring? Or will you be in the basement right next to a power hole so the battery doesn't really matter? Are you going to want to monitor and listen to stuff other than the GMRS channels? Like ham or 
air band frequencies or NOAA weather channels? Do you want to be able to receive NOAA weather alerts? Something that is very important to many people. And if you do plan on listening to a lot of other stuff, such as ham frequencies or the air band or whatever, then you will probably want a radio that can save a lot of channels. That way you can save all of those frequencies and get to them easily. You plan on using repeaters? Pretty much all modern GMRS radios are repeater capable, but if you plan to use a lot of repeaters, then just like with listening to NOAA channels or ham frequencies, you will probably want a radio that can store a lot of channels so that you can save those repeaters. Do you require a radio that does dual channel monitoring? When I go off-roading, the last thing that I want is to be confused over who or what it is that I am listening to. So dual channel monitoring is just an annoyance to me. But maybe you cannot live without dual channel monitoring or even quad channel monitoring. Is the radio waterproof? Do you even care? If you're gonna be using the radio while hunting or boating, then you'd better get one with a waterproof rating. However, if you're just going to be using the radio from your basement, then you probably do not care if it's waterproof unless you also plan to use your radio while you're in the bathtub. Where is the radio manufactured? Some people require their GMRS radio to be made right here in America. And some people will leave multi-paragraph long comments from their Chinese-made computer or Chinese-made phone complaining about any GMRS radio that is made in China. And if that matters to you, then good luck. Another very important feature to consider when shopping for a GMRS radio is does the radio have a Roger beep? Because without a Roger beep, how else will you know who the sad hams are? What I am saying is in case you have not yet figured it out all by yourself, and the point of this entire video is that only you can decide which radio has the best features for you. And you should not rely on whatever some YouTube hobo tells you to buy. And of course, you can learn all the answers to all of these questions by reading the sales ligature of the radios that you are considering and by watching video reviews from reputable YouTubers. And by reputable, I mean the YouTubers that do not waste your time begging for you to subscribe to their channel or that tell you to do other tricks for them. Now, I am sure that I have probably missed and omitted several very important points. And my friend, I did that on purpose so that you can leave a comment and point out how stupid I am for leaving out whichever feature is most important to you.